Hello, everybody. Welcome to day number two of our live streaming week. I am Michael Hoffman, the president of Ocean Curious, and today we have a special guest. That's right, it's Nico Day. <sighs> yeah. Nico Day. Hey, Nico. everybody. Hey. How you we doing? Have been a while. Yeah. It has doing, me. Nico's the vice president of Ocean Curious and a longtime member of our group and a founding member yep. of our group. Welcome to our live stream. For those of you that are just joining us for the first time, glad you discovered us. For those of you that are returning in the chat, let us know that you're out there. Uh, for those of you that are just joining for the first time, welcome. Along the bottom of the screen, you'll see our website name, our user handle, a link to the Discord where you can talk to us outside of the hours that we are doing our live streams, a link to our Patreon patron page, if you'd like to support us later on this month, we have one of our patron only events where we will talk directly with our patrons and do kind of a, a Zoom meeting with them. So if you're interested in that, sign up for as little as one dollar a month. Also, uh, please consider following us on whatever media, whatever social media platform you're on, whether it's YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitch or Twitch. Um, Please follow, follow, follow. Nico, how are you doing, my friend? Well, I'm doing good, doing good. I'm preparing for, uh, well, the course I co-offered. This is my absence online. I've been like heads down in course material, but I'm doing good, doing good. Yeah. All right. And that's an advanced OSINT class? Yeah, that's that's at least, we pretend that it will be a little bit more advanced than your class that you've written. So basically, <laughs> it's the next one. No, no, it should be good. Should be good. I'm pretty proud of it. Took us a long time to write it, so should be at least somewhat more advanced to people who already know a little bit about open source intelligence. Cool. And for for more information about your class, just watch your Twitter, right? Yeah, yeah. Dutch, just look at my Twitter account. Dutch underscore and guy. For those of you that are out there in the world that are listening to us live, please go ahead and type something into the comments field of whatever platform you're on. Let us know you're out there. Like James, good morning to you. And Chen Meet, welcome. Good morning. Um, what we're going to be doing today is two things. First, we're going to play about a half hour of GeoGuessr. We play the GeoGuessr tool to kind of warm up and collaborate with each other and to learn things about geolocation in places far and wide. Then the second half of the show, we are going to go all in on all things Instant Data Scraper, one of my favorite, most versatile browser extensions. I'm going to show you how to scrape the data and then import it into a variety of other places. And uh, that should be a lot of fun as well. All right. I'm seeing Paul and KJ, Carl. Yeah, a lot of people coming in. Cool. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Well, let's get the rules along the bottom of the screen. You see the rules for our GeoGuessr. Really, the rules are quite simple. One. When we use GeoGuessr application, we don't want you to Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, or Yandex. Don't go and search for anything that you see in the imagery. We just want to use our brains. And the second thing is, if you know where we are, you think you know where we are, put it into the chat, but we need you to tell us why you think it's a certain country. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be doing the country streak in GeoGuessr. What GeoGuessr does is um, it uses Google imagery, Google Street View imagery, to put us in a certain place in the world. As you see here on the screen, we're in a certain location. We need to figure out what country we're in, and then we can continue our streak. You see in the upper right corner of the screen, we are currently at 37. Yeah. 37 correctly guessed countries in a row. Nico. Time for me to screw it up, score or no? Should I? <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show and your last show. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I always like to do a 360 here. Um, let's see. Oh, interesting. It looks like, based upon the cars, it looks like South American or something. It's it could be, it could lot, be North America. Lot, yeah, or at least not at least not European cars. That's something. And also looking at the license plates. Yep. seem to be what's small somewhat smaller the honda yep these are definitely shorter license plates so i would say central north or south america um all right and there's something let's see if we can see what's on this dumpster over here it says stop no cardboard no. Mm, 
I'm thinking America, but it could be somewhere like Canada as well. Let's see. Is there something down here? Let's see if we can go this way and maybe get out of this alley. Person on a bicycle, a smart car. All right. So again, we're playing country street. So if you have an idea of where we are and you can tell us why, go ahead and put that into the chat. I'm going to continue down this road until we find something useful like that oh. sign right there that says Royal Royal Lapage. 204725. I'm thinking Canada or United States. Mm -hmm. Ellen and Carrie, or it could actually be um Australia. Couldn't it? Let's see oh, what really? side of the road we're driving on. I don't know. All right. So wait, that person's driving on the right, not Australia. Not Australia. And yeah. this is 23 kilometers. We are 20 kilometers. We are in Canada. Uh huh. See that short life. So that's something that I didn't know. So, so uh, yeah. Canada uses kilometers and not miles. Uh, yep. Except near where the United States and Canada are are close, then you'll see it in both kilometers and miles per hour sometimes. Thus, that has something to do with the French being uh, a lot of the times in Canada historically. You know, I don't know. But uh, I don't know historically why, but I can tell you that we do not use kilometers over here. And here we have a dot CA in yeah, the that's dot CA. There you go. We're definitely in Canada. Yep. Yep. Now it's already HC. That's totally okay to make a guess and then go from there. What I found by doing GeoGuessr for a while is that, it, much like OSINT and other OSINT assessments, you have your initial hunch and then you need to find supporting evidence either to prove or disprove it. So we make some assumptions that ah, this short license plates, the cars look like they're from North America, South America, Central America. And then each of those data points that we acquire, like a .ca, like kilometers, helps us refine where we are and, and what we're doing. So let's pick Canada. And that's correct. Yep. All right. Yeah, Paul, we're not doing the, the GeoGuessr games where you have to pick a specific uh, region or city. Uh, we just have to pick a country. All right. So I'm thinking Asia over here. And this feels yeah. Vietnamese, would you say? Yeah, for me too. Also, the, 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 the Gwen is a yep. typical Chinese, uh, Vietnamese name or last name normally. Yep. Let's see. Nafong, yeah, Vietnamese. All right, let's just see if there's anything else that we can confirm. Some good looking food, man. I know what I'm having for lunch. <laughs> All right, let's just see if there's anything here that, that will help us out because it might just be like a certain... Maybe a TLD thing. or something. Yeah, I just want something else. And there's tons of signs here. So for those who don't know, TLD, top-level domain. Yeah, we're looking for a top-level domain or something else. Um, let's see what side of the road we're driving on. Looks like, well, I don't know. People are just driving everywhere here. Looks like we're driving on the right, which would support Vietnam. Yep, we're definitely driving on the right. All right. Any, now, is there, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, challenged when it comes to the differences between Cambodian, Laotian, and Vietnamese. Um, Nico, do you have experience with that or do any of no, our viewers? No, really, I'm, I'm not that much of a world traveler, so my <laughs> knowledge is... Uh... Okay. Let's just see if we can find something else to corroborate this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's useless. Dot com. Dot com, right. All right, let's keep going. If if we could, but we can't. All right, well, let's turn around. What does that say? TV uh, station? Yeah, I'm real. I don't know. Yeah, I'm really feeling Vietnamese here. All right, should we just go for it, Nico? Or oh, maybe something? maybe just move a little bit more. Maybe we can underneath right. this bridge. We can go to the right a little bit. Because I there seem to be a lot of shops. Not yeah, won't, at all. Oh. No, in fact, it won't let me go anywhere. Oh, there we go. We can go down this way. Yeah, we're definitely driving on the right. And with all the motorbikes, definitely Asia. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as we can go. 
here they have Ty, but I think that's part of their name instead of, yeah. I think we're going to go with, with Vietnam. Yeah. At the right, check the street signs. Okay, we can check the street signs. What do you think that we're going to see on the street signs on the right here? Let's see. What's that? Mm-hmm. Kendall. Um, all right. So let's go back here and see if there were street signs. Da -do -do -do. This is where we started. Yeah. All right. What does that say over here on the truck? Nope. Nothing useful. All right. Elmo, so uh, you're saying up early today, boys. I think we covered the entire world. So for me, it's around, let me see, it's 3 o'clock afternoon. I think, yep. Mike, at your times, it's around 9, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And this week, we're doing a variety of live streams. We're doing some at 1 p.m. UTC and some at 6 p.m. UTC to reach more people. Today is our second day of doing it at 1 p.m. Tomorrow we'll be going to 6 p.m. Thursday, 1 p.m. Friday, 6 p.m. All right. I think we're going to just choose Vietnam. Laos, China. Ooh. I like to try to get it from way up high, but I can't. All right. Vietnam. That is correct. Yes. And we did that based upon the language. All right. New country. We ooh, oh, we have oh, Cyrillic. Cyrillic. These are always very hard for me because there's yeah. so many countries. All right. So yeah, we're doing our me, but, uh, my mm -hmm. mind just a lot of languages I can comprehend somewhat okay. just by looking at it, but Cyrillic for me, it just I this is, for me it's quite similar to Chinese. I just can't make anything of it. I really? Just, no, okay. Really, just Let's see what this TLD. Oh, there's a TLD right over there. Top level domain. All right. So if you know where we are, please let us know. What do we have here? An upside down umbrella on the side of a building. Keep in mind that just because we see Cyrillic, that does not mean that we are in Russia. Although with, let's see that. Is that a lot of right there? Let's see. Let's see. So we're going to head down the road here. Look at some of these signs. See what we see up here. Do, do, do. Nope. I'm not seeing anything. The hard part about Cyrillic for me is that unlike in other languages where there may be some English words or, or like a city, I'll be able to see, oh, look, it says Bucharest or whatever. In Cyrillic, even those city names are... Um, are in Russian, so I don't know what those are. Hmm. Gardena. Yeah. Hey, Death Knight. Welcome. 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 All right. So we are trying to figure out where this is. Um, let's just keep going and see what we find. Maybe we'll find a dot ru on here or something like that. Yeah, and based upon a road, you should at least expect some city name or an exit road sign or something. Yep. All right, we're going to let's take a look at the license plate here too. Long and white, we can see these license plates over here. That could be Russia. Yeah. Um Russian license plates have that long and white. Yeah. What's on this yeah. side? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Lord Marcus, hey, welcome back my friend. Yeah, it could be Russia from the license plate and it's really like, oh, and we have a dot .ru right over yeah. here. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and say that that would be something that I could do. All right. Let's choose Russia, right? Yep. Russia it is. All right. Cool. Number 40. All right. Of course, they In take the us middle out of nowhere. Of, they take us out of the city. You know, yesterday, Nico, we had a really interesting one. Um, uh, Inez and I back on Sunday, we had some really easy ones that were in cities. And she's like, oh, is it always this easy? I'm like, no, sometimes they put us into weird places. And sure enough, the first one that we did yesterday, it took us about 25 minutes to get it. It was in Africa. And we'd pieced together 
where we thought it was and where we thought it was. And we finally figured out through all the different pieces of data, Ghana. And I said, you know what? Let's just do one more click. And we did one more click. And over on the right, there was a sign that mentioned Ghana and we got it right. But it was like 25 minutes worth of work. All right. So we have the orange roof. We have a Lada here, which in a long white license plate. I'm thinking we're in Eastern Europe or Russia even. But wait, that's a palm tree. Palm tree, yeah. <laughs> Hang, on <a> <laughs> Hang on. That is a palm tree. That is not in. Huh. Okay. Oh. Well, so maybe we're we're south. Um, but definitely over in Europe, I would say. Up, oh, we got some blue on the license plate over here which would be more of an EU license plate. Yeah. What do we have over here? Church. Okay. Football. Let's see. Yeah, definitely blue right there. Let's see if we can see anything on the back of the car, like a, a sticker or anything. Nope. Nope. All right. More than a church. Just a band. Spanish-ish kind of looking mm -hmm. at the vegetation and surrounding but well and the palm tree could support that we also have a big big hill or mountain we could be um i'm thinking when i see the palm tree there i'm thinking like mediterranean type of yeah. location right and these tiles on the roof definitely are european all right hey welcome santi welcome to the live stream for those of you that are just joining us we're doing oh, there's a sign isn't there a sign on the Where? right right other right my other right hang on <laughs> hang on so that small red now straight on to the left a little bit more to the left and now straight on so right there's here. yeah and now on oh no that's a building it yeah it was a building it yeah. was a building. that's all right we'll go over to it we'll go over to it nico all right for those of you that are just joining us we are the osin curious project and we are playing the GeoGuessr Country Street game. We would love to have your help in figuring out where, what country we see in this Street View imagery. Um, please, no Googling, binging, duck, duck, going, or yandexing any of the things that you see here. We just want to use our brain and our OSINT and geolocation skills to figure this out. Hmm. Nico, do you recognize that cow? I know. If there was a chicken next to it, I would say it would be from cow and chicken. No, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a big, tall tower off there in the distance. Yeah. And we did have a mountain. So let's just see if we can get to some place. Yeah. It's always a choice at those forks in the road. Oh, I think we're going to go over here now. Hmm. Yeah, Lord Marcus, I think we agree. Uh, Spain, Italy, maybe even Portugal. Yeah, well, there's a Portugal for me looks a little bit different, but that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. It looks. I would. Is this a church or a mosque? I mean, the long tower like that, the tall tower. It looks like a church because there seem to be some tombstones at, at, right after it. Oh, that's that definitely of it? yeah, that's okay. definitely Christian or something okay. or Catholic. Well, we are stuck here. Hang on. Let's just see where we can go. It looks like we're going to go this way. I think after a little bit, we're just going to turn around because these are just country roads. Yeah. It's amazing that the Google Street View car goes down some of these roads, too. You know, it's just small. Not Portugal, Marcus says, because, Marcus, you are from Portugal, right? I think I remember that from a previous live stream we did. All right. So we're thinking Spain, Italy. I see no colors there's that no we're... signs nothing i know all those yeah. things that we use you know license yeah. plates and and text on signs none of it i wish we knew more about vegetation is this like grapes maybe i mean it's definitely a vine yeah could grapes could yeah. could be yeah all right all right and there's corn yep yep that. and again those banana tree leaves up there like a palm tree banana leaves hmm would be nice if we saw something like go real madrid or something i mean is that too much to ask nico <laughs> or a flag someone someone being a little yeah, bit patriotic yeah. 
I mean, be patriot. People, I want everybody that's listening to me right now, all 14 of you, to, to go out right now and buy a flag and put it outside of your home or your apartment. I think that that's something that, that, especially when we're at least guessing that this is somewhere in Europe, that's not that very common in Europe to, to hang your flag everywhere. I see that happening in the United States all the time, but in Europe, no. Yeah, big mountain over there or big hill. Yeah. Not corn, Marcus? What do you mean? Marcus says that that what we saw, that crop, was not corn. Mm. Something else. That's a very nicely maintained house. Yeah. All right. Mm. So the so these drainage dishes here, ditches, um, I've seen these before in I've seen these before in Italy and Romania. Uh, where they have like a driveway going across a ditch and it looks very much like this. They might have benches over here as well. So I'm leaning more towards Italy. Oh, what the heck happened there? Sorry about that. People. Yeah, for Romania, I think the buildings would look a little bit different. Okay. All right. Let's see. Bilal says possibly in the Balkans. Okay. I mean... We it could be that we're definitely in a warm climate. We have these... there's no house numbering, nothing. There's no name signs. Like it, how it, how does the postal delivery guy know where to deliver the stuff? You know what? There I see no mailboxes either. So maybe there's a central post office that everybody goes to, yeah. or they just all use email here. I mean, come on, Nico, get with 2021, baby. Come on. I'm old school. People don't use snail mail anymore. Oh, what's on the side of the building? Is there something on the side of the building? No. Oh, no, it's a window. It looks like. Wait, a well, it says Google. Maybe oh, we're yeah. in Mountain yeah, View, we're in Google. We're in Cupertino. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. Nope. So, Boss says Balkans because of the red lada. Yeah, well, could be. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I mean, when we first started, I saw the, the lada and I was like, oh, it looks like we're over there. But, um, you know, we. We haven't really seen anything else. And these do look more Italian Spanish architecture, would you say? All right. Well, we're just going to head down this road. Maybe we'll see something on a car. All right. So there's a car. Let's see if we can glimpse anything. It's a VW. Yep. It's definitely a VW. Let's see if we can see what's on this. That I don't recognize from the hang tag and these stickers I don't recognize either. Hmm. It'd be nice if it had like the Italian flag or something, wouldn't it? Hey, thanks, Steph. Appreciate the kind words there. Keep up the good work, she, uh, Steph says. Cool. We well, we're, we're trying to keep up the good trying. work. It's yeah. just not working for us today. <laughs> All right. So we have uh, an air conditioning unit right here on the outside of the, the house. And we knew that, you know, we were in a warmer climate. Um, Marco says the south of Italy, which is kind of where we were thinking. The question is, is about those ladas that we saw. Those ladas are very Eastern European, yeah. um, like Russian and those cars. All right. Nico, I'm... Um, how about if we oh wait here's a oh, sign oh it's a stop it doesn't say like a red or pare but maybe we'll get a, a street sign somewhere yes now. like a oh, it's, it's, did it say stop or did it say yeah. stj pay no it says stop oh it see it the o like is kind of cut off yeah, yeah, yeah. why would it say stj paint yeah i don't know it's a different <laughs> country just what, making what, sure that my eye caught let's let's say a what day. language are what's you on speaking? that post there was something. Well, on it that looks post. like there's a sign right here. I'm going to oh, head yeah. to that. And it looks like we're driving on the right, which is good. All right. Hang on. I went past it. Ah, so we are in a place where there's um, double town names um, in Latin and another in, in another um, language so some of the places here have cyrillic like up here like montenegro has cyrillic and latin characters um and i th think that's what we're seeing here right this is the same town it's just two different names 
Albania. Albania. Uh, well, let's see. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's in the right part of the world. Um, all right. Well, we have a town name here. That's good. Could be Montenegro or Albania. Let's see, Montenegro. Montenegro would have Cyrillic characters like we see on the map here. Cyrillic. I don't see the Cyrillic here. This is more Latin and maybe something else. All right. So I'm not feeling the. Oh, let's see what we have here. How about <laughs> look at this from the Netherlands? Wait a second. What? <laughs> that is. It's, it's a cake catering from. Daventer, which is definitely lens. So they either are a long way from home or that that is a big delay. I mean, wait a second, that throws me way off, right? Because we're thinking like this is southern not Italy, Montenegro, Albania. I'll be back in a sec. I hear okay. my I need and to here up. we have a truck from the Netherlands. What is that? Hmm. Let's see. So, all right. So, uh, Jenko Goran says that the the last E with the the diacritics on it has the <laughs> has is uh, is very um, very common over here in Albania. And actually, we see that over here with the Kavija and all. But wow, yeah, this is interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to look for another confirmation because. Can you look at the plate from the truck? It it's uh, EU-ish. Oh wait, hang on. Let me turn around. Oh, it's yellow in the front. Yeah, it's from the Netherlands, right? Yellow in the front with the blue, and then in the back, it's white with blue. So that is Netherlands. Where's my Nico? I need my Nico. There you go. White. Yeah. So that vehicle is. From the Netherlands? Huh. I have a delivery for you. It's in Albania. I'm on it, chief. I mean, what is that? Yeah, maybe Boz. It is still. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody joined. Okay, so Nico, this 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 truck that had the dot NL mm -hmm. had a yellow EU looking plate on the front and a white one on the back. Netherlands? White one on the back? It should have been yellow, yellow. No. Nope. Or ye yellow white. Yellow. So, Netherlands is both yellow, both sides yellow. Okay. Black so, centering, yellow, uh, yellow plate. So here, let me just go back and show you. Do, do, do. All right. So here we have the white plate here. And then if we go back even farther and we look at the front, we see yellow. Hmm. So, huh, maybe. I don't or the know. coloring is just off from a certain angle. Could be. No, that's clearly yellow. Yeah, that's yellow, but from the backside. If the sun, oh. if the sun hits you directly, it could be a little bit off because it has some reflection in it. Okay. Some reflection like kind of stuff. That's white. I I I can't. I mean, it doesn't even look yellow to me. All right, let's let's continue down here. Yeah, it's it's some long distance delivery. I mean, although we're getting some yellow, maybe I don't know. Huh. Yeah, so I mean, this is says, definitely export, not... export plates are white, but it would mean that on both sides of the car, there would be export plates and they can okay. only be used for a certain amount of days. Yeah. So, well, and, and we're definitely not in the Netherlands. I'm not trying to say that. If, we are if so, I'm moving there. That's where the nice way to gotten got in. Uh, yeah, we got some mountains and nice trees. Let's see what this taxi has. Taxis are nice because they are usually pretty local. All right, so we have a white plate on the front. Yep. And da, 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 white plate on the back with a what? Hmm. What does that say? MNE? Oh, this right here. Montenegro, maybe? M? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to read into it. Ah, I can't zoom in any, anymore. Yeah, it's not readable enough. I think it's Montenegro. But that, yeah, MNE. All right, so now we have some conflicting things, right? We have the E with the diacritic that kind of looks Albania. We have Montenegro, which has the thing that I like about Montenegro is that many of the places have 
multiple names, right? It's it's two things. Okay, Marco says Mon Montenegro too. Really? Based upon that taxi? All right. Or are you saying it's Montenegro because you know that this catering company delivers all the way to Montenegro? <laughs> I've heard. Next be. beer. All right. Well, we are at the bottom of the hour here. So, Nico, what do you think? Montenegro? Uh, honestly, it, for me, it can just be anywhere in, in Europe. It can or at be least anywhere. where it's sunny in Europe. Yeah, no, really. With all the things we found. All right. All right. So here's what we're going to do. That's Bosnia. Here, hang on. Montenegro. There we go. Let's see. I'm yeah. not claiming responsibility for, for this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's do this. I did this yesterday with uh, everybody. See, I didn't see Cyrillic. On this, the sign where it had two things, although Kotor and Kotor, yeah, I guess it could be. Um, all right, so let's do this. Everybody that's listening to us right now, put into the chat, whatever application you're in, put into the chat what country you think we're in Montenegro, Albania, or something else, and we'll go based upon majority rule. That way, if we're wrong, Nico, uh, we mm -hmm. can just blame it on our listeners and it's not you and me that messed up. <laughs> Oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, the, the palm trees and, and stuff are, are something that would definitely be yeah. in this part of the world. Let's see what that? we have here. Croatia. Okay. I've got a Croatia. I got a no idea. Thank you for your honesty. Really, KJ. That That's nice. All right. Lord Marquez says Montenegro. Fast says Montenegro. Lucia, Lucia. What did it say on... Uh, Dom, Domica, Laza, maybe? Laza. Montenegro LinkedIn user, Albania. Wait, there was a sign back here. Is that a sign or just a post? All right, let's see. Maybe this car will also have a Montenegro. That, yeah, the taxi. I know that taxi is nice because it, it's like local, right? Looks too tidy to be Italy. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I think I'm going to go with Montenegro. We'll see what happens here. Ready? Three, Fingers two. Crossed. Hey, well wow. done, people. Oh, but yeah. look at where it was. It's Montenegro over here near Albania. Yeah. That was close. That could have been either way, but that taxi with the M-N-E on it. Well done, people. Way to notice stuff. Also, you notice over here we have the signs with two words on it, but over here we have all of those words, all of those words with the E with the double dot diacritic over top of it. Yeah. So, those oh, of you great that job. Said Albania, you are darn close. And I'm happy that we picked the correct one. All right, we're at 41. And that is a great place for us to stop for now. Whew, Nico, gets my heart yeah. racing. <laughs> well done, everybody. Thank you for helping us with that. Um, for those of you that are just joining us, it's the bottom of the hour, and we are the Osin Curious Project. I'm Micah. That's Nico. Yep. Oops, sorry. That's Nico. That's and Micah. Yeah. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work on some open source intelligence skills now. The great thing about open source intelligence and the work of finding information from online resources is sometimes in the harvesting of that data. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show stuff. And Nico, please, you know I can just talk and talk and talk. So if you have something, I'll, I'll try and chip in where I can. Yes, please do. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a free tool and some other ways to uh, to look at. Uh, and harvesting data, and then not just harvesting data. I want to show you how you can take that data that's been harvested and use it in other tools. I like to think of it as uh, scraping data as the output of one tool, and then where can we use that as input to other ones? Yeah. So here we go. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now for this, we're not going to use GeoGuessr. We are going to use a tool called. I like ViewDNS.info for this. Um, we're going to use a tool called Instant Data Scraper. Now, Instant Data Scraper can be found here. It's a Google Chrome only extension. I'm tossing it into most of the chats right now. Um, Instant Data Scraper is by Web Robots and it has this little Pokeball. I have no idea how they get away with using the Pokemon Pokeball as their logo. I, 
I mean, it's, it's clearly a Pokeball, right, Nico? Yeah, got to catch them all. Got to catch them all. <laughs> um, so this is the, the extension that we're talking about, and it's only in Google Chrome. Now, some of you are like, oh, I don't like using Google Chrome for my assessments. Well, I think in the next half hour, I'm going to show you a really compelling reason why you might need yeah. to do and that. And if you don't want to use Google Chrome, you can also use Brave as a browser or any Chromium-based browser. Yep, Brave, Chromium, et cetera. Yep, absolutely. Good call there, man. All right, so Nico, one of the common things that we do when we get to social media is we retrieve somebody's timeline, right? Yeah. I mean, that's we, we that's go to we a do. social media site, we have a target account. Let's just take twitter.com slash, oh, I don't know, some weird one. Don't trust that guy, he's Dutch. Yeah, <laughs> suspicious dude here. So let's take Nico's Twitter feed. Now, let's say that you're doing OSINT and an OSINT assessment and you come across this page and you're like, oh, I wanna harvest this, and then all, of tweet, all of Nico's tweets here. Yeah, let me just go ahead and harvest them. Now, there are special tools that we have um, that we can use to harvest that, or we can use Instant Data Scraper. So with Instant Data Scraper, once you're on a site that with data you want to harvest, you just click the button. Yeah, but it needs to detect uh, like table formatted data. Otherwise, it won't you, work. You know, Nico, I used to mention that, but I don't think that's the case anymore. I think it's it's scraping out standard repeated tags. Not quite sure about that because this clearly isn't an HTML no. table. Right? It's more right. like the frames it can detect. Yeah, right? I, on the page. I'm not exactly sure how they're scraping it out, and I don't want to know. It's magic from what I care, from what I know. But look at this: in just one click of a button, Instant Data Scraper has recognized this center section as the content to scrape. That's what I want. Now, if I look at the data that's in here, you can see that each of the different columns is kind of represented here. Is it perfect? Nope but it's pretty darn good. We have who tweeted, we have the a link to who tweeted it. We have the name of the person. Yeah, there's some stuff in here that's a little messed up. Here we have profiles. We have um, over here, th this is like the profile image. Now with Instant Data Scraper, we can do some really cool things. You see that there's only 11 rows that were collected here. Well, Instant Data Scraper can take control over my browser and watch this. Twitter is one of those sites where when you scroll down the page, it loads more records and loads more records. We can turn on infinite scroll and then click the start crawling and watch what happens to that 11 rows here and watch what happens to the browser in the background when I do that. The instant data scraper tool is now controlling my Google Chrome, scrolling down, scraping more tweets, scrolling down, scraping more tweets. And it'll do this until either the site gets wind of this and like, hmm, you're scrolling really too quickly, in which case you can increase the minimum delay or the maximum delay here, or until you reach the end, or until you press the stop crawling button. And this is also where, where my advice would be always use tools like this with your VPN, because if you're using this with your own provider, you may get blocked by Twitter in this case, based upon your scrolling behavior. And then I, with you. I wish you'd told me that about 10 minutes ago, Nico. <laughs> all right so we're going to stop doing things from twitter here now um so here what do we have well we have all of the data about who was tweeting where they were tweeting to links to the actual articles and dates and times as well as the content and we can just export this to i'm going to export it to an xls x and then open this i'm using a linux system and on this linux system we have the libra office calc you might have Microsoft Excel or some other tool, but here we go. We have the CSV or we have the Excel spreadsheet with all of that data. We harvested it quickly, easily, and freely. Yep. Now, Nico, you mentioned HTML tables. Let's take an example like that. So here we have registrant name. So this uh, is a tool called viewdns.info, one of my favorite, favorite sites for doing reverse who is lookups. Nico, do you want to tell the audience what a reverse who is lookup is? So if you don't know the top level domain of, of something, but you want to find out if someone has used his first or last name or someone else has used, for instance, our names or email addresses to set up a web page or website to, to register for that, 
an individual registrar, uh, you can look in a reverse, reverse order for that. Keep in mind that someone can use my name without me knowing signing up for that again. So there may be false positives. Uh, and one of the other things that we love, I won't search on you, Nico. You I'm can, gonna, you can. I, no, I, no worries. I'm not going to. I'm not going okay. to. Trust me, man. Um, you're messing up my flow, bud. <laughs> so one of the other things that I love doing on in reverse, who is, those of you that have seen my demos before or taken my class, is that reverse who is is great to identify all of the domains used by a certain uh, people from a certain company. So if I have my company uh, spotlightinfosec.com and I register for a web domain like mica.com with my mica at spotlightinfosec.com email, then in the reverse who is, I can put in that email and it'll tell me what domains are associated with it. The thing I like about this is that we can just specify a wildcard search and search for all of the domains from, I like doing Apple, apple.com. And here you can see what I've done is I've searched for any who is record, any domain that has a contact information that has an email of at apple.com. And look at all of these domains here. Now it doesn't tell me who at apple.com owns these domains, but we can perform some other searches for that. Now, what I'm showing you here is not about reverse who is or anything. What I want to show you is about harvesting data. We can again use the instant data scraper tool to harvest the data. I'm going to reset the columns here. I've already done this demo once and it remembered this site. So here I've clicked the little Pokeball and it says, oh, look, there's 501 rows. Well, over here, I see that there's 500 results plus the header row. So that's 501 results. And you can see the three columns, domain name, creation date, and registrar. Nice. So this is all of the data there is. Very cool. We can now take this and export it to CSV. Well, just to make sure it's not all of the data there is. It's all the data that has been loaded. This is all the data that's on this page. You're absolutely right. Thank you for that distinction, my friend. You see right here, it says there are 12,087 results. We're only seeing the first 500. So thank you for that, Nico. Keeping me honest. So here's one of the times when we can extract things using Instant Data Scraper and then use it in another OSINT tool Instead of extracting it as an XLS, let's save it as a CSV. Hey, Adi, Hi, Adi. welcome. What's that? I said, hey, Adi. So we're oh, in sync. We said it at the same time. It's like responsive. Hey, Adi. All right. So I've saved it as a CSV file. This is on my system. And now I can close this because I've got all of the data. Oh, you know what? Well, hang on. Let me do that one more time. I got distracted by Adi. Adi's quit it. Let me show you another feature here of Instant Data Scraper. Sometimes you want all of the data and sometimes you just want some columns. Here with this, maybe I'm not interested in this creation date column. Let's just go ahead and close that or remove it. When Instant Data Scraper saves this data now, it's just going to save the domain name and what is the registrar? What is the company that is registered to that has registered that domain name? You'll see why I want to save that in just a moment. Here, viewdns.csv. Now, Nico, you can choose here for our audience. Do you want me to show them the Maltigo networking or the network analysis tool or OSINT Combines? Uh, let's do Maltigo first because most people are so interested in Maltigo. But... Cool. Let's do it. So I'm using Maltigo's case file, free tool. Um, it doesn't is just very free and, well, it is free. Let's create, let's go ahead and... Um, import that csv so we're going to import a third party table yep click next go to my desktop there's that view dns i'm going to choose a fully, fully mesh yeah. right this is going to make connections both ways from our data to and from all the different nodes in our data and now what the tool does is it tries to guess what type of column data is in each field. Here it's correctly figured out that the first column are domain names. You see a little globe here. The second one over here, you just see text and it has this little like call out bubble. 
I want to change that. Uh, these are going to be businesses or companies. So clicking on this and choosing company. Oh, that's a, not cars. Hang on. Click on that. And we'll go down here to company. Now you see this is a business. Cool. That's going to help us out when we uh, map this all out. We can see it in just a moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to do some data analysis here and see some patterns in this data. So we've exported from Instant Data Scraper. We're importing into a tool that allows us to analyze the data. Yep. What I'm going to say is that a domain is registered to a company. So we're going to take away this company to the domain by just clicking on it and then hitting the delete key. So in our graph, we have a relationship between a domain and a company. Next, we're going to uncheck this stop importing after 10,000, leaving everything else the same. And then, boom, it says it imported them all. And let's see what it looks like. Now, some of you are trying to figure out why are we doing this? Well, I don't care about that. Well, the reason is this. Look at this data now. With that data that we, we just downloaded and under, and looking at it in these kind of organic views, we can take a look at patterns in the data. Here you see that there's a whole bunch of domains here. Let's see. There's a whole bunch of domains here that are uh, registered with CSE corporate domains. Over here, we have a whole bunch that are registered to Mark Monitor. Here we have another one for or a bunch more for CSC Corporation Service Company. It, using a technique like this, where we export from one data set, import it into a data visualization tool, can help us identify patterns and even some anti-patterns. Like here, we see that there are 332 domains registered to CSC corporate domains. It's just wrapped it all up into a single entity. Here, there's 36 for Mark Monitor. So if you were doing this analysis, you may look for ones that are maybe not connected to CSC corporate domains or Mark Monitor. Maybe there's one for, oh, here's one, Lex Synergy. That might be interesting. It also looks to me like a lot of, a lot of CSC corporate could be merged. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot of CSC corporate, right? Because in the register, in the data that we downloaded, since some of them on the view DNS page here say CSC corporate domains, comma, Inc. period, and some just say CSC corporate domains, and some of them say corporation service company, these are all the exact same company. It's just when they, they register domains, they use different strings. So, what I would normally do is look at my CSV and normalize the data, make sure that all of these CSCs actually said the same thing. So, but look at this. We have some registered to GoDaddy. And if you look at the domain names associated with the, the domains that are registered with an at apple.com email. Could be that, employees, right? Yeah, these are these are possibly personal domains. So this is cool. We've exported using instant data scraper and used that into to import into a CSV. I mean, imported that CSV into Multigo for some network analysis. And Nico, don't hate me here, but I think we're going to Weigel. Because you know what? There's an excellent example here for uh, using Instant Data Scraper over here, too. Are you okay with this? Yeah, I'm cool. I love Weigel. I love playing cool. around with... What is Weigel, Nico? Can you tell our audience? So Weigel is basically a huge database that has been around there for, I think, over two decades already that uh, where uh, people all around the world can intercept like Wi-Fi radio signals and they can map them out and plot them on a map because it's based on triangulation of radio signals. And with that, you can find those SSIDs, which are basically your, your home router names and those BSS IDs, which are the unique surface set identifiers that are connected to the router. And we can map them out. And with that, you can potentially find uh, locations that are tied to people, businesses, whatever, in essence, even mobile phones or whatever. Hey, Nico. Oh, there's a lot of Dutch guys. Interesting. I know. I was just searching for stuff. So what I've done, and again, sometimes the, the thing that you need to do is understand how to get at the data. 
uh, for Weigel, you need to register for a free account. Once you register for a free account, you can perform a search. I've performed a wildcard search looking for any network with a Dutch and guy in the name of the uh, Dutch and guy in, in the name of the network name. So when you're looking on your phone or your laptop, it'll say like Dutch OSINT guy or Dutch guy or something like that for the network name. I've run that query and we have 11 results. Now, the nice thing about the Weigel site is that they give us this estimated latitude and longitude. So if we are interested in figuring out where Nico's home network is, because of course it's going to be like Dutch guy. These then are all just, mine. Yeah, really? of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Nico, that's the thing is you, since you live over in the Netherlands, you probably can look at some of these latitudes and longitudes and go, hey, this is probably for Netherlands, but this is over somewhere else. I can't do that. So this data looks in the form of a table. Let's use instant data scraper to yep. harvest it. Now I've already run this. Is that a global search? Yeah, LinkedIn user, it, it would be a more of a wildcard search using the percents wildcard search. So when I have instant data scraper here, it's collected all 11 entries and you can see all the different data that it pulls. I don't care about much of this. I don't care. I don't care about when it was scraped. So I'm going to close that column. I don't care about that. I don't care about the channel it was on or how many packets. What I want is this, that which is the BSS ID, the actual network ID, the name of the network, and then the latitude and longitude. What's interesting, do you notice the the fourth and the fifth one on a row? They both have the almost different BSS IDs. Ah, yes. Off by so one. They're right? from, yeah, probably one company or one location bought in a series. It's Or it's one device that has multiple radios. Yeah, it could also be. Right? Yeah. It could be like 802.11. And if I actually, let's just switch back here and see. So we're talking about these E2 and E3. You can see that the channel here is yep. four and the channel here is 100. So this is 2.4 gigahertz and that's five gigahertz. Yeah, same device. Yeah, the location. Looks like almost the same location based upon yeah. coordinates. Should be a couple of meters off. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. All right. So we're going to export this. It gets exported to Y goal. Now, one of the things that I like doing is going to Google Earth. Google Earth uh, allows you to import CSVs. This is something that I always tell my students that you know, you need to understand what are the imports and exports from all the different tools that you have, because instead of just using the tool the way you use it, you may be able to expand that. So let's take a look here. Yeah, File. just to make just yeah. for the people listening, there's a difference between Google Maps and Google Earth. This is an actual application which you can run from your browser as well as a standalone application. It's not Maps. It's entirely different. Yep, exactly. Good call there. Um, so I'm going to import. When I import, I'm going to choose the Weigel data. And it says, oh, look, here's the detail link, the, the network name, and then these two columns here. Awesome. Now, I need to actually tell Google Earth, because I don't have a column called latitude and one called longitude. I need to tell it that the latitude field is row five. That's this one. And then row six here is the longitude. Hit next. Go ahead and hit finished. It says, hey, do you want me to make some pretty icons? Mm, no, let's just put them up. There we go. And oh, wait. Hmm. Oh, we need to turn this on. Yeah, when you import all of it, for some reason, it never turns it on over here. But once we turn this on, what will happen? Let's head over to Europe. I'm expecting to see a whole bunch of these in. Look at that. Oh, there's also one in Switzerland. There is, there is one in Switzerland. Let me turn off the roads. Hang on. Turn roads off. Turn 3D buildings off. Yeah, look at that. So now what we see is these dots. For those of you that can see them, here we have a dot here uh, in The Hague. Flying OSINT guy. Uh, flying Dutch guy. Here's Dutch guy. We see a whole bunch right here in this area. We even see one over here. Uh, two over here in Switzerland. So... Again, not getting into wireless and all, but what we're doing is we're exporting into CSV and then using that CSV as an import to some of the tools that are going to help us figure out, oh, look, we want to go over here to this 
area to see all of the places where the Dutch Ocean Guy Wi-Fi network is. Well, I'm not Dutch Ocean Guy. Ocean Guy. Network. Oh, yeah, Dutch Guy. <laughs> Dutch Guy, yeah. Um, so, and here's where those those devices were found. And you're clicking on them, and it tells you. Yep. Yep. Cool, right? Uh, and Paul says he's imported into Google Maps as well. All right. Very good. Yeah. So that was uh, just a quick dive into instant data script. And there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with it. Uh, one of the, the common things that we do is uh, we can, if we search for something else, I'm not going to show this, but let's just do, uh, I don't know. If, oh, wait. Oh, wow. Printers. Look at all the, look Printers at all the also good. With let's Micah. do a brand name printer. That's also interesting. Wi-Fi connected printers. No, let's do Wi-Fi networks called Micah. Look at all of them. Just Micah. Not even like Micah. There's 774 of these. So let's say that here we, we're only seeing the first 100. Instant Data Scraper, you can click on Harvest and then tell it, hey, if you click here, it will harvest more data. So you can do page after page after page of harvesting as well. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Nico, anything else on Instant Data Scraper? Um, no, not particularly. I just wanted to say with Weigel, it's good for people to understand that this information was uploaded loaded by other people uh, doing that stuff that people like to call like war walking, boating or whatever. So basically they strap on a device that can intercept those radio signals and plot them on the map. Yep. Yeah. So we're just accessing somebody else's data set that they've uploaded and we're not doing anything illegal or hacking or anything like that. It's just looking at a database, harvesting the data, and then using it for a send. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, let us know what you thought about that. We're hoping that it was interesting and useful to you. Again, just some more OSINT skills for you from your friends over here at the OSINT Curious Project. Absolutely. Yeah. I know when I do stuff like that, Nico, you get like, come on, Micah, that's that's not good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, cool. So, Nico, anything else for our audience? No, I just um, I just want to thank everybody again for participating. I always enjoy about the and it always amazes me that people all around the world are always awake when we tune in live. Like, I I am waiting for the day when we are just here, either one of us or two of us, but that never happened. So, thanks everybody for joining us. Yeah, absolutely love talking with you. And uh, for those of you that are maybe free the rest of the week, here is our schedule for live streams this week. We do uh, one live stream week per month, and then we also do them uh, every other Sunday or so. So this week, the 13th through the 17th of September, we're already on Tuesday, uh, 1 p.m. UTC. Tomorrow's Wednesday, we're going to switch to 6 p.m. Friday will also be at 6, and Thursday will be at 1 p.m. All of these are UTC time, so convert that to whatever time zone you're in. And I'm hoping that I'll see a lot of you tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Thanks for helping us out on GeoGuessr, everybody. And until we meet again, hope you stay us and curious. Stay us and curious. Talk to you later, guys. Bye, everybody.